up, everybody? Welcome to one more week of Chicken Bone Alley. Brought to you by SRI Performance, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, Draco Springs, Earl Ramey Racing Engines. What is going on? I'm David. I'm Sterling. What's up, y'all? Whew. Man, I tell you what. It's been a weekend full of racing, which is good for us because uh, we get to talk about some racing this week. But uh, before that, how was your... Uh, How's your week weekend of past? Well, it's <laughs> it's getting a whole lot better because um old Ed Piotrowski, our 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 weather guy here in Florence, come on the thing the other day and said we got like eight days straight, no rain. I can't I can't believe it. Is that what I'm Ed excited. said? That's what Ed said. And if Ed says it It's gospel. It's you can you can mark it down because it's gonna happen. Gonna yeah. happen. The gospel according to Ed. Exactly. So <laughs> So, yeah, we've had some good weather, and I mean, you know, dude, it's been terrible. I mean, we got two little youngins here in the house, and you can't go outside, you can't play, you can't do nothing. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I know one thing. It, it's been good, but it got cold last night. Well, it has definitely, well, <laughs> you you got to give and take a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 <laughs> at this point, I'm okay with the cold. I just want sunshine. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But, I, yeah, I agree it, with you. I agree it's, with uh, you. It was, a little, it was a little nipply. I ain't going to lie to you the other day. Uh, Saturday, Sunday. It was wind, it was it was airish. It was, yeah, it was breezy. But <clears throat> like you said, it was what twenty eight degrees this morning. Yeah, when I woke up, it was twenty eight degrees outside. I said, "Ooh, that's kind of chilly." Yeah, it can't make up its mind. I don't know. Eighty. I told 20, you. I told you it was know. false fall last week. It definitely was not. I mean, false fall, fall, false spring, false spring. Yeah, yeah it was not spring. supposed to happen. Not supposed to happen. But uh, but yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Finally getting some. Uh, it's like I said, get get some time to do some things that was outside of the house a little bit, which is good. And uh um we've been my wife and I have been planning going to Top Golf and to the beach to eat for quite some time now. And I can't ever go. I don't know if anybody ever gone to Top Golf. But good lord, you need like a year in advance uh to uh reserve your spot. Pretty much. I mean, because you can't go. I went on there on Thursday you need a little app thing you got you showed me all that how to do all that you get a little app thing and you can you can make your reservation well all the reservations was already booked <laughs> for saturday yeah, already they, like, they book them like i think it's literally um i can't remember if it's like five or seven days in advance you can go in there and book well that's what they obviously did i did not i did well, I, top I golf on. top golf through the winter and we went when it was cold before and um it's kind of the thing to do because you're somewhat outside, but you're inside. But you're inside, and you got them big and you old got heaters. heaters. Right up, yes, <laughs> and it's can't beat it. It's like you. It, it can be pouring down rain. It's still okay. It's perfect. It's it is. It, I love it. It is awesome. I suck at golf. But. Well, I I mean I'm not the best by any means. My wife hates. She she does not like golf at all. Like none. Like won't nothing. Won't even drive by a golf course. But loves top golf. Yeah, my, mine the same way. Kayla the so, same I mean, way. And we. have Found out the first time we went because she whooped her tail the first game before we figured out yeah. before we figured out how we was playing this. Yeah, I no see they 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 don't play fair. <laughs> well, no, they don't. <laughs> when they, they try to just tap it out there and it hits a little red thing down there and they keep on getting. So we try to get as far as we can get. Yeah, we're I'm supposed gonna, to. I'm gonna have to one hand it here. I'm just gonna say. And speaking of talk about this, kind of funny because uh, earlier today I was look I was bored looking at my phone and uh, the WGT app world golf tour app has a top golf mode on it oh yeah yeah it's like you're in a top golf thing it's got all the holes and everything out there really like top so it's golf. like a little simulator yeah 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 sweet it's pretty cool yeah, check that out i like it when i when, when it's a three-hour wait again i'll just do that <laughs> instead of <laughs> just play here and you can play two-player mode too so hey that's the thing. It's probably <laughs> a lot cheaper too ain't like. oh, i promise you it's a whole lot cheaper because <laughs> that is one place that is not cheap it ain't cheap. Nothing's cheap. I think I had to pay to go to the bathroom, bro. It is expensive up in there. <laughs> Especially when you only go with, like, two people. Very. Because you can't high. split it up. It's high. But that's okay. It's fun. It, ain't, it don't happen very much. No. So we uh, we to do that. that. It's a good thing they don't put one here in Florence. Yes. For sure. Cause for sure. Be running over there on the Cannot put break. a top golf or Hooters in Florence because we we'll, we'll be broke. 100%. <laughs> we'll, we'll be broke. Won't ever make it back to work. Promise you. <laughs> I'll be looking for a job there. But uh, uh but no, it was good. It was a good time. Um nice ni nice nice day to get out there with with the wifey and uh go eat some Japanese. And do that. 
No, we ended up wanting, really. Well, I ended up wanting fish. Go fish. And she was yeah, she was all right with that. So we went to Sarah J's down. Oh um, yeah, you told me that. Going to uh, going into Merle's Inlet there or, or Garden City, Garden I City, guess. Yeah. Um, really cool place right there on the on the marsh area there. Anybody that wants some good fresh. Speaking of another fresh expensive fish, place. Some. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it ain't. It was not the cheapest by any means. I got uh, I got some red snapper. It was good. Ooh. It was very good. Very very good. Um, I think Leah got chicken tenders. I ain't sure. Probably. But, Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it was a good place and a cool place to go eat. So definitely go check that out if you're in the, in the area. But, uh, yeah, did that Sunday, went to church and, uh, came home and did pretty much nothing yesterday. I, I needed a, a, a recouping day. So I laid <laughs> around and watched the rest. <laughs> oh, I, I, I understand that. Um, I, let's, let's see, Saturday. Uh, I know I said on here a while back, my wife's aunt died about a month ago now. I think it might have been a little more than a month ago. Uh, but anyway, they she was out in Missouri, I think it was, uh, for that. So they wanted to schedule a um, kind of a celebration of life, I guess you would call it, uh, here back in her hometown. And, um, and a lot of family I, I, is Puerto Rican. They like to dance at any time they <laughs> they don't have to have much of a reason to party to party they just like the party <laughs> they just like the party hey it's like kyle Nor- norton jr i mean i, I like the party <laughs> <laughs> so uh so i took our uh dj equipment and i dj'd this and well, i knew I, mean, I, I knew before the end of it they would be dancing and they were they were i was correct well some people do things differently, and they were probably <laughs> the latter. So that I mean, gets, I mean, just, it's cool. Know, though. It's cool. I, mean, I yeah. guess. Not there's anything wrong with that. No, I'm just saying. No, <laughs> um. just just different. No, I, I've <laughs> never been to one like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll say. No, um, but no, it was cool. It was cool. So uh, we spent pretty much all day there Saturday, um, and Sunday. Me and Landon actually got up, and I knew it was going to get cold, and I try to keep some, uh, I got outside dog, I don't care if it's five below outside, and snowing, she most of the time is laying right in the middle of it, but I always um, feel bad for her, I mean, even though I know she's fine. Oh, yeah. And Because she don't even want to come in the house, it's just one of those, she's a, oh, yeah, used to a hot nature dog, lab. Um, yeah. But I, I got her a nice doghouse. She's actually got a heater in her doghouse. Um, but I tried to keep some hay in it, too. And she had done, strode out all the hay in it. That was in it. So I went and bought a couple of bales of wheat straw from Tractor Supply Sunday. And uh, went and put in her, uh, her doghouse there. Uh, actually, I even... This is how bad I feel about it. I mean, and she just makes me uncomfortable. That's all it is. I mean, I look out there and you she's fine. Go out there and she, lay with her. I, I think, that, well, I, I could do it now because not only did I have a heater in there, but it didn't heat the way I wanted it to. Um, So what I ordered, I ordered a uh, heating mat to lay on the bottom of it. And then I put some hay kind of on top of it and everything. So they don't catch on fire in there. No, 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 no. It's made for it. It's made oh, for okay. it. It don't get stupid hot. I think you go to Sam's and get one of those um, mattresses in a box. No, I'm good. It's <laughs> out there for it, This is enough. On, <laughs> this is enough. Come on, if I do, then I am going out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, uh, but no, I had Landon up in the up in the doghouse with it because it's a big old doghouse, big old thing. Yeah. So uh, he was all up in there, and he's allergic to dogs anyway. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no, Let's he see, come. He, eyeballs he, fold all yeah, up. They will, but he come out and went and washed up. He could get in it a whole lot easier than I could. <laughs> Yeah. So uh yeah. So we spread That's all that and then, and then I went inside and I decided not only was I gonna watch the race at um at Cherokee, I was gonna watch the cup race too on Sunday, so I had a phone going and T V going and everything going trying to right. watch both. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No, ain't nothing wrong with that at all. Um but before that in the meantime, while I, and I know this may sound pretty bad, but while I was at the 
celebration of life. Um, there was a race going on over in Dillon that I really wanted to pay attention to and uh, check out. Uh, the Cars Tour made their first trip ever since it's been the Cars Tour. The Pro Cup went back there, went there years, years, years ago, long time ago. Um, but since it's been the Cars Tour, they finally came over to Dillon Motor Speedway. And uh, we got somebody coming on the phone here that wants to talk about it some. Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone now, we have a lady here who is the host of the Cars Tour and a reporter for them and everything. And it's great to have her on, Miss Jacqueline Drake. Jacqueline, how are you doing today? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm doing great. Been a little bit of a crazy Monday in the office, but... Uh, it's been a great day. How have you guys been doing? Oh, it's, it's been great. Another Monday, just like you said. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff, good stuff. Well, first of all, before we get into anything else, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today and hanging out with us for a little while here. Um, I want to give you a chance kind of to, uh, you know, we all know you, and anybody that follows uh, Asphalt, racing especially asphalt late model racing you know they they all know who you are pretty much but we got a lot of dirt listeners too let you kind of introduce yourself here yeah well hi everyone i'm jacqueline drake i actually am a dirt lover past dirt racer myself i came from a family household full of racers where uh, we all raced on dirt at one time um, I, I myself raced for 13 years ended up uh, graduating into asphalt racing as I got older. My dad, he's an old sprint car driver. He said, no open wheel for you. <laughs> so we went and did uh, legend cars and late models. Uh, I got out of high school, started into college, started doing some marketing and racing and, uh, you know, worked on all levels. I worked in IMSA, I worked in Cup, um, doing marketing, and then started working with the Cars Tour almost seven years ago and have done everything from uh, marketing to hanging banners to social media and I have to do their event hosting, do a lot of fan interactions, on camera work. I've worked uh, on pit road doing pit reporting and a little bit of everything. Even this past weekend at Dillon Motor Speedway, I was waving the, the checkered flag during driver introductions for the drivers. So uh, whatever it <laughs> takes and I I love being a part of motorsports. Uh, my first time ever visiting the racetrack, I was six weeks old, so that's pretty much all I know. There you go. That's and that's it. that's how it needs to be. That, that that sounds about like me and Sterling also. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, that's great. <laughs> well, one question before before we get into anything else, I, you just said you were out there on the uh, on the grid waving a checker flag for drivers in inter- driver introductions. Do you miss being that driver is getting introduced yet? I do. Funny enough, uh, this year, it's going to be my 10-year reunion, so to speak, of the last time I was in a car. So I'm I'm about to turn 29. The last time I was in a car, I was 19. And uh, I got some stuff up my sleeve. I've made a few connections. So actually, this year, I'm going to be getting in a late model, back in a late model again. I said to myself, I'm going to do it again before I get into my 30s. And um, uh, so, yeah, I I do miss it. Um, but, you know, on my side of things, I know, you know, where I'm kind of planning on going in my career. And I get the same adrenaline rush standing there, waving the checkered flag and being a part of it as I do racing. But, yeah, I think we all miss being behind the wheel sometimes. That's right. That's that's, that's absolutely awesome. And uh, I'm uh, ready to hear when you're going to announce this this ride here and uh we might have to get you back on here talking about that then especially <laughs> but <laughs> i'm excited I'm ex- awesome that's cool well anyway so as you just mentioned the cars tour was at one track that's real close to us here down the road in Dillon, south carolina Dillon motor speedway first time the cars tour has actually been to Dillon Motor Speedway. First of all, what'd you what'd you think of the facility over there? So Dillon Motor Speedway, I'll tell you, um, is in the middle of nowhere, as you know. <laughs> and um I actually thought I'd never been there before, but 
old Facebook memories reminded me that I had visited there and watched a legend car race back in 2013. So uh, I'll tell you, the track itself on the late model side is definitely all about tire wear. And we have a couple of tracks like that on our schedule in the series as well. So you see a lot of people just kind of saving their stuff, but everybody was really excited. We haven't done a season opener outside of Southern National I think in the entire existence of the car store, we've always done it at Southern National, but since uh, the challenges of last season with COVID and changing up our schedule so much, the 2021 schedule, you can see, you know, reflections in a lot of the new places that we're traveling to that we haven't been to before. Um, so going to a new track for a season opener, again, everyone was really excited and we ended up having great weather it was cold, but it was sunny. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I was glad to be there. That's awesome. Well, we know the, uh, you know, when schedules first came out, yeah, we're looking at Rockingham to go to, but that got changed up. And so we were glad to have y'all over here at Dillon Motor Speedway with Ron Barfield, <laughs> the owner over there. And um, tell us a little bit about the race, but I want to, um, I know we know Justin Johnson won it, and if you look on paper, that's all, that's what it says. But there was a whole lot leading up to that, and uh, I will say I watched your um, your track walk uh, Saturday morning, and I'm just going to say Justin Johnson kind of called a shot there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you for tuning in to the track walk. It's something I started a, a couple of seasons, seasons ago, and I actually missed a track walk at one of our race weekends just because we were I was having a busy morning and I had a couple of fans call me out in the stand saying, Hey, why didn't you do your track walk this morning? <laughs> That's so, important. Um, I try to make sure I do that race day morning. Uh, you know, people like to see it. I ended up finding a wrench in turn two. So three fourths, somebody lost that. But um yeah, while I was doing the the Facebook live, Justin Johnson had tuned in and commented will you take pictures with me in victory lane of course insinuating that he was going to win the race uh which fans then you know chimed in and and was like hey uh justin you sound pretty confident about this weekend and um it clearly paid off because you ended up getting the last corner pass over lane rigs and ultimately his first ever cars tour victory with the series um, but the team has been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. I mean, if you look at his other car that's uh, affiliated, Caden Honeycutt, he has, you know, never raced with Justin Johnson racing before. A Texas guy that came uh, from, you know, down south up here. And when he was fast all weekend long going into race day. So um, they clearly have been doing their homework, getting some testing in and whatnot. And it it paid off. Definitely did, and that was a that was a crazy finish there, coming up with some lap traffic and uh, Lane Riggs kind of getting held up there, um, and then saying he didn't didn't even know it was the last lap. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I was texting with him the other day because after I had left the track, he I had heard that he had said, "Oh, I, I wasn't aware it was the last lap." And he told me that he didn't know it was the last lap until he was on the back straightaway. <laughs> and I don't know how that happens. <laughs> I, uh, know. I know a lot of times, you know, sometimes with spotters and whatnot, you don't necessarily are looking at the flag man. You, you know, that's normal. And then obviously there was a lot of lap traffic in front of him. Um, but at, at the end of the day, you know, it, it kind of is what it is. And I know that there's going to be more ahead this season for Lane Riggs. He's a fast, you know, competitor. And I know he wanted to win that one. But I, I went back and I watched the replay several, several times just to make sure that I saw it correctly. But I felt like Justin did uh, what any of us would have done in the last corner. And I thought he did it pretty clean. You know, Justin said in his interview, oh, well, I didn't mean to race you dirty. And I wouldn't have called that dirty at all. No, I thought... No. You know, he he did it very clean and 
uh, without taking someone out or, you know, he barely even touched Lane. So uh, it, was, it was cool to see him get that win. And uh, also good to see the banter afterwards between him and Lane. I think it'll be something we'll kind of watch throughout the season. Yeah, for sure. Well, I know we have seen a lot dirtier racing over there at Dillon than that, for sure. Um, yeah, like you said, it was it was definitely a good race there. And uh, I hate it. Well, for Lane, it kind of terrible it worked out that way. But, hey, you live, you learn, I guess, in his in his side of it. But um, another name that a lot of people know, old, old Timothy Peters, he had a lot of traveling to do this weekend, huh? He absolutely did. I went up to him uh, right after qualifying because he ended up qualifying on the pole. And I said, "Hi, you, you know, how are you feeling? You hanging in there?" He goes, "I'm hanging in there." <laughs> and I told him, I, "I said, let me know if you need me to round you up an energy drink. I can find one out there." So, um, you know, he's quite the trooper, but he's a true professional. And this isn't, you know, anything he's not used to. That's Unfortunately, right. he didn't get a better truck finish the night before. But the red eye is always a rough one, and then you never really sleep well flying in general. That's right. Yeah. Definitely so. Well, um, another name I want to talk about real fast. Uh, driver that's around here um, has won a lot of races. He won down at Myrtle Beach, has come over to Florence Motor Speedway and won. Uh, now he's running the Cars Tour with you guys. Uh, Sam Yarborough, he, he he put on a uh, pretty good pretty good uh, finish for himself there in the, in the first race of the season. Um He's a good driver. I really like to watch him. He is. And funny enough, he's one of the older drivers in the field. I was just looking up. He was born in 84. So <laughs> he definitely tops the charts on um, the ages there amongst the field. But Sam Yarbrough is a name that's sim- synonymous in short track racing for success. Um, I mean, he's been around for a really long time. He raced in the Wheel and All American series. Um, I remember when I was younger hearing his name and the things that he was doing. Um, so I'm pretty excited. He seemed a little shy this past weekend, uh, just getting acclimated in with the group and whatnot. But uh, I think he's going to do great this season. I really do. And I'm, you know, pretty excited to kind of see his driving capabilities because you after watching these drivers for so many seasons you'll get an idea of where their strengths and weaknesses are so you can kind of gauge when you go to a track hey this guy is going to be uh, you know one to look out for these we're got a place where he feels the most comfortable and so sam coming into the tour for the season is going to be neat to just see how you know, he mixes in with the drivers that have been there for countless years, like Deke McCaskill. But I, I was, I was happy to see him a part of it. Us too, us too. He's, we've had him, we've talked to him here when he's uh, had some wins at Florence Motor Speedway, and he's a real nice guy. Another driver I want to uh, get your opinion on here: uh, Junior Motorsports driver um, William Cox. Oh yes, little Will. <laughs> <laughs> I got to meet him down at New Smyrna Speedway during Speed Week. So he went down there and had some mixed luck, right? Uh, Ended up getting caught up in some wrecks, ultimately. I mean, who didn't at Speed Weeks? But he's a young driver that's promising. I mean, he's underneath that Junior Motorsports banner. Very, very committed. Uh, If you were to meet him in person, you would not believe how young he is. He is so focused, I mean, only at 15 years old. And uh, his family, you know, has had him do a variety of things. Like he was, he's done some testing in uh, Formula 4 cars. Um, He has teamed up with uh, some, you know, development programs to kind of get him pushed through. But, I mean, in the legend cars, he did a good job when he was out there with Barbo Racing and again like you see these young drivers and sometimes when you meet them you you understand if they really have the hunger or not and will is definitely one that does so i think once he gets a little bit more seat time underneath uh the junior motorsports umbrella and they kind of get acclimated together he's going to definitely be one to look out for um 
he's done, you know, quite a bit of testing in late model stocks. And I know he's raced also in some limited late models, uh, specifically at Tri-County Speedway. But um, again, like once he gets into the rhythm with this new team, I'm, I think he'll do really well this season. Yeah, he definitely will. Uh, that's a, that's a team that is known for having good, good success. So uh, I really feel like he will as well. Um, and you mentioned mm-hmm. that about young drivers. Uh, we were down in New Smyrna also this, this speed weeks this year and, uh, down there with our friend, uh, Derek Griffith. And, uh, and I'm gonna tell you, it, we were picking at Derek because he's kind of like the old veteran out there at 24 years old, because there's some real young guys coming up in the sport nowadays. <laughs> Definitely is, which is kind of funny to think about, right? At 24 years old, you're already a veteran in the field. Even Lane Riggs was saying that. He goes, man, I, I'm i such a veteran to the Cars Tour Series because I've been here since he was 14 years old. And so now he's 18. And I'm like, you really are a veteran. <laughs> You've been around <laughs> forever. Uh, That's crazy. And it, it just, it's just kind of laughable at 18. You're considered like one of the old guys around. Yeah, it's very true anymore. Well, anyway, so what is up next for the Cars Tour? Yeah, so up next, we're going to be going uh, out to our uh, backyard. We got Hickory Motor Speedway. Excited to go back there. Last year, uh, you know, we had gone there once, but we weren't able to go with um, during the throwback. So normally you would have seen us in August. So going back there uh, for the M- MTP Tire 250, and we're going to have our super late models as well as late model stocks. So the season opener, opener, another change for it was that we only had our late model stock divisions. So this will technically be the opener as the supers are going to join us. Uh, and I'm ready to see the those guys and see kind of what they got. Uh, there's a little bit of change in the super field. They've uh, changed up where there's now a uh, fast four challenge that's part of that division where the top four qualifiers can choose to go to the back of the field. And if they uh, race their way up through the field and finish in where they finish where they would have qualified or better, they will win bonus money. So um, it's a new initiative by the car store to kind of bring in some more money and push it down to the field for them. And then of course we'll have our late mall stock guys there, the whole touring 12 clan and a lot of people have already uh, registered for the event. Uh, not event uh, entry list comes out on Tuesday. So next Tuesday evening, you'll see everybody that's entered in. But yeah, next Saturday, Hickory Motor Speedway is Sweet. up next. Good deal. That is what we are uh, ready to watch. Some supers, especially. That's, <laughs> okay. that's, a, that's always a uh, fun, fun race to watch. So uh, another thing I want to talk to you about real fast. Um, it. I know the premiere episode of Stickered Up came out last week, and that is a Cars Tour podcast, so I want to give them a plug here. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so the, the uh, Stickered Up podcast is a podcast that is hosted by Stephen Dunn, and it will come out kind of in synopsis with our races. So twice monthly, there'll be some episodes uh, kind of, again, going along with the race schedule here. But, yeah, the first episode came out. The podcast is exclusive to Cars Tour, so they just talk about all things Cars Tour. They had on uh, Justin as well as Jared and uh, Kirk Ipok, which Justin joked about in Victory Lane, how the podcast was uh, lucky, so to speak. So we'll see uh, if the next guest ends up winning the race. But yeah, you can check that out. Uh, it's on all all platforms, Spotify and whatnot. They have a Facebook page, but you have sticker stickered up podcast. We all like to be stickered up. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's right. You got you got to be stickered up <laughs> to pay the bill. <laughs> so uh, that is awesome. Uh, it, I'm glad they have better look than typically what the drivers that come on here do. It's like the next week after they're on our show, <laughs> it's like they all have bad look. I'm not going back on there. <laughs> no, oh no, cool. not good. <laughs> Hey, we, we recovered ourselves. We went out near Smyrna and stuck a sticker on uh, Derek Griffith's car, and he won the night we were there. So it was like, all right, yeah, yeah so one championship we're good. Down there and off, so that was good. We're good. <laughs> so, uh, so that is awesome. Well, Miss Jacqueline, thank you so much for coming on here this week and hanging out with us and giving us 
giving us all the lowdown on the Cars Tour, and um, hopefully we can have you back on here soon to talk about it again. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having me on anytime. Love to join. I can talk racing all day. So right. anything you need, just let me know, and uh, definitely looking forward to a good race season here. Well, all right, we are too, and uh, thank you again. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks again to Miss Jacqueline Drake coming on and telling us everything we did to know about the Cars Tour this year and um, and all the happenings over there at Dillon Motor Speedway because that was that was a good race, good race over there and uh, glad they finally came to Dillon. Uh, can't wait to see the start of the supers and everything at Hickory. So I'll be watching yeah, that. Their uh, their first race of the season will be over there. Um. I want to get up there, Hickory, too. Matter of fact, soon the uh, well, I think we, our buddy, our we'll buddy be, old Derek's gonna be up there Derek's soon. He's gonna be up there soon. Speaking of Derek, actually, he's gonna be down at the Rattler this yep. weekend. Yep, we're gonna be rooting him on hard. There is uh, he's got a good chance there, bud. He I think sure he does. does. I mean, he's. I mean, the crowd he's running against was a lot of them. They ran against at uh, at the snowball, and then. Ran against down in New Smyrna, and we saw what he did at New Smyrna. So, yep. Uh, speaking of New Smyrna, I guess you will say one of the big sponsors down there all week is our friends and big sponsors, SRI Performance. Show um, is show enough, show enough, show enough. Uh, mm. Thank SRI coming on here with us this year again, um, guys. If you uh, you looking to uh, I know y'all getting them cars ready and about got them done because there's a lot of race seasons. If they haven't already started, they're starting really soon. Oh, yeah. Really well, soon. you know, we talked with Jeremy a couple weeks ago, and I know the up north, northeast and all that, Midwest, whatever, it's still a little chilly up there and ice yeah. and snow everywhere. But that's coming up soon. Um, so uh, I know you, some of them guys still got a couple more weeks left to build some stuff. So um, definitely go check them out and get everything you need. Definitely so. Go online. Look at uh, all their inventory. I don't care what it is. They got it. And like I said last week, they're the Walmart for race cars. That's what they are. 100%. Um, and when you're on there, remember, um, at checkout when you're online, and uh, get that cart all filled up with everything you need. When you go to checkout, go to promo codes and put in our promo code CBONE10. That's C as in? Chicken. B O N E one zero C bone ten get you ten percent off. Um, it helps, bro. When you fill that card up, it adds up. Pretty I promise quick. you, they it got does. some good prices, but it adds up when you buy. Well, all I stuff, mean, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I mean, S R you ain't gonna beat the prices of S R I in the first place, but we all know race car parts aren't cheap. <laughs> they are not cheap. <laughs> that uh, that that relation to Walmart did not have anything to do with the cheap part of it. Well, that, but they are rolling back prices. <laughs> they are 100. <laughs> percent But yeah, racing ain't cheap. That's for sure. But they've got some good equipment, best you can get. They got it in there. Um, doesn't matter what it is. If it's from cleaning supplies to <laughs> brand new, ready to go, custom races and en- racing engines, they got them. Go get it. That's right. That's right. Um, always remember they are your stop for Draco Springs. So, uh, check out all the PDF forms online on any spring you need. If you, if they, if you can find a spring that they don't have, which I don't think you'll do, um, they can custom make it for you. They hook you up. But I don't think you'll find one that they don't have. No. Nah. I've been in that in that uh that stock room back there. It just looked like purple. Just purple. That's all I saw for miles. <laughs> it looked like purple. There were springs everywhere. And uh I think they'll have everything you need. If you can uh if you can name it, they probably got it spring wise, I guarantee you. Also, uh, stock car steel and aluminum. I know you guys finishing up, hanging up some, hanging some bodies on some cars. Um, make sure you get your get your supplies as uh, far as you know, metal work from stock car steel and aluminum. Yes, sir. Um, it's good stuff. They got very, good stuff. Very much so, and they always pretty much pretty much everywhere. I don't know how they do it, but it's there is a SRI trailer at pretty much every racetrack that I've, I've ever seen. Dude, I don't know I'm how telling they do you. it. I'm telling I don't know you. how they do it. They are they are everywhere. So I'm pretty sure they'll probably be down at uh um at the uh Rattler this weekend, I'm sure. And uh, they'll have one out in Phoenix. 
Well, I know I, I saw pictures of the SRI truck. I think it was the first truck at Las in Vegas. the infield in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're always the first ones. The first ones there. They're ready. They, when you when they roll them cars off trailer, if they need something, all they got to do is walk to the SRI truck. There it is. And they're ready to go because the SRI truck's already there. Can't so, beat it. No. You can't beat that with a stick at all. Um, So y'all go get all your parts, SRI Performance, uh, Draco Springs, and Stock Car Steel and Aluminum. Don't forget those names because you're going to need them. Also, right down the road from them, go check out our buddy, Earl Ramey. Earl Ramey Racing Engines. He does a lot of work also with SRI Performance because when SRI Performance, or actually when Stock Car Steel started, they shared a building with Earl Ramey. Yep. And so it's a great tie-in. Earl gets a lot of parts still from them. Um, they do a lot of things together. Um, but Earl has world-class crate engines. Are your blueprinted crate engines for all you guys... Uh, I saw this past weekend, Jeremy Steele in another crate, Earl Ramey Racing Engine. One again up there at uh, Cherokee. So that tells you how good his crate engines are. So uh, y'all go check out Earl Ramey Racing Engines. And when you get all up put together, make sure you schedule some time on his chassis down there. Because you're going to need find out how, how strong that motor is, but then you find out where else you can make power at throughout the car. So, go schedule some time on the chassis down over there at Earl Ramey Racing Engines, and uh, tell him we sent you. He ain't got no promo code. I don't even think he gets online. Nah. <laughs> he gets on Facebook. Nah. Sometimes. Tell you what, I'll tell you how you save some money. You go see him and take him some food. Yeah, just take him some food. I don't know, he was talking and, about he was on a diet the other day. Okay, okay take, him, take him some on. diet food and go see him. <laughs> he'll hook you up. I bet you he'll, he'll give you something off. I don't know what it is. He might tell you off. <laughs> yeah, I was going say, to see tell him. You off. <laughs> go see him. Go see him. <laughs> you will not be disappointed. Go I see promise. him. I promise. I promise. Well, cool. Well, cool, cool, cool. Well, as we was just talking about Las Vegas with SRI showing up first out there, let's talk about what else showed up first in Las Vegas. Man, dude, I tell you what. I. <laughs> we we talk a lot about Kyle Larson on this show because, because of his talent. It's, we've, I mean... <laughs> It ain't no joke. It ain't no secret. This dude can drive anything. Anything. Pretty sure. anything. anything. So, you know, we all, we've we talked about it earlier in the last year and all that when we found out he was going back. We knew it was going to be a very, very, very short matter of time before he found Victory Lane. By all means, with, with the talent and the equipment, um, no shade where he was, what he was in before. I just, you know, I just think everything aligned a little better for him here at Hendrick, I think. And, uh, man, four races in. Then got him a win. Got it done. And I'm going to tell you, you, you cannot, no matter how good a talent you are, there's some eyes in the sky that's helping you out. He can't do it without him. You're right. You're right. And speaking of those eyes in the sky, <laughs> that's a good lead in there. Oh, uh, let's go to the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, on the phone now. It is our pleasure this week to have the winning spotter from the number five cup car driven by Kyle Larson from Hendrick Motorsports, Mr. Tyler Mon. Tyler, what's going on, buddy? You doing all right today? Yeah, yeah, doing really well. Uh, thanks for having me on. Man, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. This, Absolutely. I know this, you've been busy running around everywhere. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I spent uh, spent an extra day out in Vegas um, after the win. I was actually getting ready to fly home, and then I stayed uh, for the day for the first cup win in Vegas. I had to uh, stay out in Vegas and <laughs> party a little bit and have a good time. So I flew home yesterday, got home around 7 o'clock last night. There you go. There you go. Well, that's what I was actually fixing to ask before we got into it too much. How how was the after party after the race? <laughs> Uh, it was a good time, you know, Vegas. It, it wasn't it wasn't crazy. Um, we had a lot going on, you know, and stuff like that. We just had a good time, got to hang out, and all of us did. And, um, you know, it was, it was a really good time. And we had – it was cool to get a, you know, win in Vegas. And like I told a lot of people, it's awesome to win in Vegas because it's a party town. But we kept it clean and kept it cool, and we had a pretty good night. That's cool. That's cool, man. That is absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah. And uh, again, yeah. before we go too far, first of all, congratulations 
yes, on on the win and your first cup win. So congratulations, man. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, I want to go back before we really get into that, uh, get into the the race talk there. We want to, because me and Sterling both, we, I mean, you know, we're friends on Facebook, stuff like that. So I've looked back on your page, see, you know, what you've done over your career. But far as you know, there, there's a lot of spotters we can look up and find out what they've done because they're, you know, been long, long time veterans in the sport and all this stuff. I, we couldn't find a whole lot about you, to be quite honest with you. So I want to give everybody <laughs> a chance to get to know you and get to know where you came from and how you got into racing and all that stuff. Uh, so I grew up um, in a town called Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, which is um, pretty much right across the Maryland line. So I spent most of my time at um, Hagerstown Speedway, uh, Williams Grove Speedway, um, pretty much just grew up racing. I raced motocross as a kid all the way till 2009 when I seriously got in an accident and uh, pretty took a toll on things. So I moved over and started working on you know, full wheels, dirt late models, sprint cars, Anything I can get my hands on, um, I started working um, in the dirt area, you know, being so close to Williams Grove and uh, being there, you know, every Friday and then going to Hagerstown every Saturday or Port Royal or Sealand's Grove or wherever. I was at a dirt track every single weekend after I stopped racing motocross. And um, so then 2011, I graduated from high school and made the journey to North Carolina. I wanted to work and race. I knew some people down here. And originally I was going to do pit crew stuff and uh, I became tire carrier in the first two years I was down here all the way to 2013. Um, I did a lot of pit crew stuff, um, ARCA, some Xfinity stuff, some cup stuff here and there, um, you know, some back marker teams and was headed down that path. And then I knew uh, Dave Moody really well and um, was helping him on the side with his asphalt late model. And uh, we went to Kenley one night, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, we went to Kenley one night. He's like, hey, man, we need a spotter. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not me. I'm like, I can't do that. So anyway, I um, I went and did it. You know, he talked me into it. And since that day, um, I've spotted ever since. And um, yeah. just so, I mean, looking back, Dave Moody was a huge – um, inspiration, I guess, on me and pretty much cut me my break. And 2013, I did that. Um, and then 2014, Mason Mitchell, uh, I met Mason Mitchell at the end of 2013 and was a mechanic on his car. Uh, you know, didn't spot for him or anything, just mechanic. And then he started his own team in 2014. And I, he asked me to come over and mechanic and I was there. And I wasn't even spotting for him then. I was just a um, mechanic. I worked at the shop. You know, it was just a good job for me. And we get, went on to win a championship together. And it was just – everything was just happening so quick. And um, so I won a championship with him in the ARCA Series in 2014. 2015, I took over full, full, full-time full spotting and um, spotted for Austin Wayne Self and Mason Mitchell. We finished second in the championship. And then I think it was 2000. Uh, so I went with H. Scott and did his cane and stuff his last year that Hunter Bays was there. And I just was spotting ARCA, spotting some non-companion truck races. I filled in to do some Stuart Freeze and stuff and some Xfinity stuff for Ryan Priest back when he was with Johnny Davis. And there was a handful of races, you know, that I was just doing here and there. So I just filled my schedule up spotting everything I could, whether it was a late model ARCA, Xfinity, uh, or a truck. And then... Uh, 2017, I got my first cup deal with Carl Long. He was entering back to cup. 2017, 2018, somewhere in there, he was getting back into cup racing, and um, I was doing his Xfinity cars full time already. So I did cup deal for a year with him, half a season. Rick Ware hired me, and uh, I did two, three years with Rick. Um, he gave me, you know, such a great guy. He gave me an opportunity um, to spot full time in the cup series and. You know, obviously the you know back marker car, the money wasn't there, but great experience, and I'm glad I did. I just didn't come up and get my opportunity. You know, I felt like I worked hard for it Absolutely. every step of the way and every step that I took. Um, working with Rick Ware, you know, it's um, when you can go run for him, when you can go finish the top 20 or go to Daytona, and, and you know, and obviously run, you know, up in the front and run top 15, top 10. That's like amazing, and um, 
so like finishing top 20 with him was just phenomenal and it was great and then uh here i am now i phone call earlier this year um or yeah i guess it was earlier this year you know january came around and here i am now so um huge break huge cut so that was pretty much my racing background uh growing up (laughs) That is awesome, and it really is a really. I mean, from from the time that you you know decided to come down here and and get all that, that's that's really a really fast, quick. You know, (laughs) you've you've got up there quick. Yeah, that that is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy how fast it worked out. I mean, it was super fast. Um, everything. Like I said, I felt like I put my time in. Um, up on the cup stand, you know, I was up there for four years before I got this deal, and um. I just feel like I put my time in, but it, it's went so yeah. quick. I mean, it's, it's tough to think. This year marks 10 years since I moved to North Carolina, and it feels like it was just yesterday. Well, that's what I was about to say, man, is, uh, yeah. it, is you uh, you might be new for, for Hendrick Motorsports over there, but it, you're actually a veteran crew chief. I mean, a veteran spotter. I don't know why I said crew chief. Uh, spotter. Yeah. You are a veteran spotter. Um, that's that's a lot of time on the roof, man, and that that's awesome. So you talked about – Getting a call from Hendrick Motorsports. Um, how how was that call? How did how did you? Uh, what was the reaction there? Uh, man, it was. Um, I want to say mind blown. I kind of had an idea. It was all coming together. Um, I got a phone. So this all came quickly. I got a phone call Monday night from um, Eddie DeHaan, that spots for Chase Elliott, and he said, "Just uh, keep your phone on you tomorrow. You're going to receive a phone call." So I did, and the next thing I know, this is Tuesday, and uh, it's Cliff Daniels. You know, he's like, this is Cliff Daniels from Hendrick Motorsports. Um, you know, heard a lot about you, listened to your audio, like we're interested in having you. And here, you know what I mean? And I just, um, I, at first, I was just mind blown. When I got the phone with Cliff, I just thought, man, this is crazy how it all works out. And um, he told me, he said, uh, you know, I'm, gonna give you a call i'll give you a call let you know by friday you know it was getting late towards the end of off season we're getting ready to get to daytona and uh he's like i'll give you a call by friday and i'm like all right you know sounds good so then it was just a waiting game uh all tuesday night like just waiting to get that (laughs) final offer so that was tuesday night and wednesday afternoon it didn't take long he called me and said hey can you come over to to hendrick so i went over there and i met with him and um, we got to talking and he asked me if I had any other questions and I said, uh, yeah, when, uh, do I have the job? Like, is this a <laughs> dumb deal? And he, uh, he, he laughed and pulled out a contract out and That's it was awesome. a done deal. So huge opportunity for me. And I can't really thank Cliff and pretty much everybody there. You know, Cliff actually reached out, Eddie DeHaan, everybody that reached out on a limb for me and put me where I'm at now. That's that's awesome, man, and I yeah. I personally can say that I don't think you could be with any better team. I don't know Cliff. I have never met Cliff, but me and Sterling I have had the opportunity to meet Mr. H himself uh, at a motorcycle ride actually years ago. Super nice. Yeah. Um, uh, Tab uh, uh, Eddie to hunt. Um, he um, he spotted for our buddy Derek Griffith down at uh, doing the ARCA race at Daytona this year. Oh yeah. And um, so we were down there with him, and super nice people. I mean, just just great group all around. And I mean, we can't be more happy for you. And even Kyle, we got to talk with him a good bit. Um, actually, up in Ohio when he was running dirt car last last year. Um, we yeah. got to hang out with him. And dude, I mean, that's just a they come across as a great group of people. Yeah, definitely. They, I mean, what I couldn't ask for better people to put myself around and. Um, even with Tab, you know, I travel with Tab on the weekends, me and him travel together, um, you know, with him being my teammate. So, you know, Eddie and Kevin Ham would travel together and me and Tab travel together. And I mean, for us going back to back, he went at Homestead last week and me went in the Vegas this weekend. Um, it's been a really good role for us and me and Tab get along so good. It's a great time. And yeah, everybody, Kyle has been great to me. Um, just, we have gelled so quickly on what has been going on i mean with just so late getting started and it was literally daytona practice you know we did practice together and then our duels was our first race together you know i've never worked with kyle before i've met kyle in the past just through dirt stuff and but never actually spotted for him so 
everything has came quick. And if you would have told me that we would have won our race and our fourth race together, I would have told you you were crazy, but it's uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty phenomenal. I mean, it's great. It's, he, and he's absolutely amazing. He is um, good to work with. He's great over the radio. He's very respectful, thankful um, for his opportunities. And, um, you know, it's, he's put me in a great opportunity too. I mean, it's just like him being the driver that he went out on a limb for me and put faith in me and, um, and gave me my opportunity and cut me my first cup win. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's amazing. And like you say, uh, four, just four races in, I, I knew it was not going to be, and y'all have run great. Uh, the first four races has been great for you guys. He has some, he has some tough luck here and there, but, um, Man, y'all have done great. You've been in contention every race. So that's you can't ask for better for sure. Right, yeah. So just we talked about this the other day after our Las Vegas race and um we went to Daytona, should have finished fourth there at the end and just got clipped by the two and still finished top ten. Um should have had a chance of winning the road course and Kyle just made a mistake and he owned up to it and um yep. we ran fourth last week at Homestead and um we weren't as fast as our teammate, but I felt like we could have definitely ran top three, but yeah, everywhere, and I, I even told Cliff now, like, be, this was before Las Vegas, I told him, um, you know, I just want to make sure that me and him are on the same page. I feel like we should go run top five almost every weekend and have shot at winning races, and Cliff, we're all on the same page. A great group of guys, everybody from the five team is all on the same page, page and we go from meetings, uh, I can't tell you how many meetings I have a week, um, with this team just to stay bonded with them and know everybody name to name and face to faces. And, um, we're all on the same page and I've never been with a team that has worked so well together, um, preparing and getting things ready for the next race. You know, yeah, we won Las Vegas, but come Monday morning, we were in a post-race meeting, um, about Vegas and then getting our stuff ready for Phoenix and talking about Phoenix. And I have another meeting come Thursday and, um, yeah, it's crazy how much uh, everything just works out. Really is, really is. All right, so let's speaking of, let's move on to Las Vegas. Uh, first of all, before we even really ask any questions about it, I just want you to give us a rundown of how you think the whole race went for y'all. So um, obviously we started third, and um, when it first fired off there, I thought we were really good um, in the beginning. Um, I, th- I felt like we just. We had a good car. I wouldn't say, like, okay, we're going to go win. But, you know, the first stage went well, and the competition caution came, and um, we got the lead and dropped back to lead and was running second. And um, I think, uh, looking back, how this has went so fast, um, going to the first stage, there was a caution came out, and we decided, you know, Cliff, and then they decided to stay out. And it worked. I mean, we ran – three wide for the lead for four or five laps after that and it was just amazing to me and i even told myself i felt like kyle probably got tired of me in his ear telling him (laughs) that he was three wide middle for so many long but it was crazy how long um but once tire kind of wear off after that sixth seventh lap we kind of dropped back a little bit to 12 and uh we knew we kind of took some notes in you know cliff took notes in there and we kept in mind you know if something like that would happen towards the end you know we could maybe stay out and have a shot if it's under you know less than five laps or something like that we'd actually have a shot at the end of it um and then after we bolted tires on after the first stage uh i think we restarted ninth and he drove to the lead and then i just knew that we were good we won we kind of did green flag pit stops and our pit crew has been absolutely amazing all year long i mean we have come in uh, you know fourth fifth come out first i mean and they they have executed on pit road every pit stop that we've had this year. So it's been really good. Um, so we had a great pit stop. We got a big lead out there. We kind of just cruised the stage two, um, the stage two win. And then after that uh, restart, we went back green, took the lead away from Denny and uh, started pulling away. And Brad was a little bit fast. I, there was times in my head that I thought maybe the two was a little bit faster at some parts. But then Kyle just started clicking off laps that was, you know, a tenth, a two tenths faster than the brow. We kept pulling away. And there was a situation where we were getting ready to pit under green. And there was a lap car in front of us. And, um, you know, they called on the back straightaway. Like Cliff told him to pit. And I'm trying to get with the other spotter, letting them know that we're pitting. And we were just too 
didn't have we time. had too much speed to come down pit road. Yeah, we didn't have time to get down. So um, the two caught us a little bit. But on a good note, Kyle, um, you know, my first thought was, you know, that we missed it. Like he was trying to get a lockdown to come in and, you know, but he – he actually, I guess, experienced and just veteran of him being in a race car, he, he didn't totally mess it up. Like, he stayed in the gas, and we got back. And we were still in front of the two. We didn't lose the lead to the two. Um, but when we came on pit road, the two was right behind us the next lap. And our pit crew, once again, did a great job on the money stop, got us out front. And I told Kyle, I said, we have to go. We got to get away from the two. Um, and we absolutely did. We pulled, you know, we worked traffic a little better than the two did. And Kyle was just so smooth getting around traffic and not getting held up a little bit. And he could run the top, middle, bottom, wherever. And, um, yeah, we had a fast car. Definitely it was super fast. And with Kyle driving it, it made it even better. And then we just uh, – I'll be honest, the last 10 laps, I'm just waiting for NASCAR to bring out a caution or something <laughs> or somebody wreck. And you think that, you think that, and you keep on thinking that. And once we took the white flag, um, you know, I just told him, hit your marks. At that point, we knew um, the next flag was going to end it. So either we were winning it or something was happening to us, and we ended up winning the race. So it was super cool. It was a great race. Um, I, you know, we led like 107 laps, so dominating race car, and it was definitely a great race for us. Yeah, it definitely was. And I tell you what, this year seemed a little bit – well, I, in, in the past couple of years, uh, Vegas on restarts have been crazy. And I know that's crazy for you to have to stand up there and call that because, good Lord, like you say, three, four wide, whatever. But it seemed like it stretched out a good bit uh, a good bit longer, you know, from the restart or, or whatever. Um, how – well, I guess I should say, you know, I, Daytona, Vegas, wherever. What is your most – what what is your favorite racetrack to spot? My favorite racetrack is the spot. It's probably the Super Speedways because I feel like we have so much going on, and the spotter has a main role at Super Speedways, knowing what lines are coming. Um, it's probably the most hardest race for us to spot, but it's the most fun race to spot. The one that I enjoy, um, either it's Daytona or Talladega, where right. you're working lines and know what lines are coming, and um, just know where to be. So that's probably one of my favorite. But I will say. You know, Las Vegas for us was um, – I'd never been in a situation with – that we were – you know, we'd start up front, these runs would come, and the guys, t- you know, getting bump drafting a little bit at Vegas and pushing somebody out, and he had these big runs come in. It was a definitely an experience for me. It's something that I've watched film. I watched film all, all week before Vegas, watching the runs happen on restarts and just watching them happen within the first couple laps and just kept in mind, well, you know, what – what what should I expect going into Vegas, you know, going into Vegas on Sunday? And um, I had an idea, and then when it kind of came to real life, it's just these guys, the runs come so fast, and you're trying to block and trying to let Kyle know before the run's even there. And so um, Vegas is definitely – it was tough. It was – we did get spread out, and it helped. You know, it was obviously better for us. But my favorite – one of my favorite places to go is Daytona Talladega. You just play a huge role in the race. Definitely so, and I was going to follow that up with those uh, first, when when you were just talking about um, uh, y'all being three, four wide there for quite a few laps there, did it almost get that feeling of, of a Daytona, Talladega type spotting up there at, at those first few laps at uh, Las Vegas? Oh, for sure. It was definitely, um, I mean, we, you spotted just like you're at Daytona or Talladega with, the, you know, we were three wide and with the runs coming and how fast the two got to run to make it three wide on us. And you're just talking about the runs coming um, out back and how fast they're going, you know, if they're barely coming or they're like, you got a huge run out back and whether to block. And I know we threw a couple blocks on some guys um, that helped us, but close calls, they were just coming so fast. And Kyle does a great job at knowing his surroundings in a race car without even me telling him. And yeah, it's definitely if spot like that is feels like you're right at Daytona or Talladega. There you go. There you go. Well, another question I have, and and you were just talking about a little while ago, was getting around lap traffic. Do you feel like um, with other teams you have worked for, um, and, and you, 
as you said, some of them were some more backmarker teams. Um, you raced around those guys a little more when you were with those other teams. Does that help you yeah. going into uh, w- with with Kyle coming up to lap cars? Does that kind of help you to know the tendencies of those other cars that he's about to come up to? Uh, yeah, it, it it's helped. You know, anything that I can take from you know doing Rick Ware stuff like that and being in the back marker car. And- uh, you know, you take a lot in because you kind of know where they're going to be. Obviously, they're working with new spotters, or some of them have the same spotters last year, but they know. Um, there's times where maybe they do get your way, but I felt like in Las Vegas, every one that we came to that we were lapping, um, they did a really good job getting out of the way and just knowing, like, where these guys are going to run at, like, knowing before, like you said, working with these guys, like, I'll know – hey, this guy's going to be on the bottom, you know, this guy's been running up top, and you're always looking ahead to see where these guys are running. You know, hopefully they get out of your way, but if they're way out of the way, we're running the top, then we got to run the bottom, or vice versa. If they're running the bottom, we got to run the top. And um, we catch them so fast, and I feel like they've done – they did – every driver back there did a great job um, Sunday staying out of the way and and – letting us just keep cruising by and not getting held up. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Tyler, I know a lot of people, um, well, race fans anyway, want to know um, a life of a driver or whatever. But what is a week for you um, getting prepped for a race? When does it start? When did you get to where you're going? Your whole weekend, I know you, you do some spotting with trucks and Xfinity as well. So just kind of give us a, a, a brief what to expect for you this week going to uh, Phoenix. So, um, so usually on a weekend like this past weekend, I did stay an extra day out in Vegas um, Monday. But Monday morning we had our um, post race meeting, so I have a meeting there. Um, Tuesday we have our team meetings um, from guys in the shop and the road crew with uh, Cliff and everybody. So that's my Tuesday. Wednesday I kind of get to have time off and um, enjoy. And then Thursday we have our pre race um, meetings for the race coming up. So Thursday I'll have a meeting and then. Um, I don't fly out till Saturday to go to Phoenix. I'll fly out Saturday morning with for the Xfinity and the Cup cars are just in Phoenix this weekend. But if it was something else, I'd fly out on Friday. So usually that's pretty much a whole week. I get to run a uh, I run some RC cars myself um, through the week as a hobby, and I get to run on Monday nights. And so I get to do a lot of things. I get to do some vacation, see some family. Uh, my weeks are. Um, pretty busy but you know kind of laid back at the same time there's just a lot of prep that goes on with this whole you know the deal that i'm in now with hendrick um mondays pretty much i um watch a film from you know the day before and go with my meetings tuesday i watch pre-race film before we go into a pre-race menu on thursday so i have an idea what's going on and then yeah i'm always watching always watching film whether it's truck and um working with Raphael Lassard this year in the GMS truck, um, meeting him, uh, for whether it's for launch to go over, try to meet them at the shop and just with all these teams, just try to meet schedule wise, you know, obviously Hendrick is my priority, but there's times where, you know, on a Wednesday I get some time or Tuesday afternoons, um, after our morning meeting, I can go meet with these guys. So a lot of meetings going on, a lot of video watching, but I still like to have fun whether I go, you know, take a day and go play golf or or um, do my RC hobby stuff or get to do stuff like that. Man, you need one because that, that sounds like busy you are me. busy, busy, busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm super busy. Yeah, I'm, yeah, super, super busy. I'm actually uh, – I leave here later tonight. I'm actually get to have a little vacation. I'm going to go down to Daytona Bike Week for a couple of days. There um, you go. Cool. I got some family down there, so I'm going to take it off, take a couple of days off here and – I'll still have my meetings. They'll just be on Zoom calls, and then um, I'll fly out Saturday. I'll come back Friday to North Carolina and then fly out Saturday for Phoenix. Well, I'm just saying, way down Daytona because we were down there, you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, if you would like yeah. seafood, if you like seafood, you may have been there already. Um, go to okay. uh, Off the Hook. Off the Hook, awesome. Place. Off the Hook, I, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have to look that up. Yeah, I've never been there. I uh, we sat I've been next to a lot to of restaurants there, but off, okay, yeah, <laughs> Off the Hook. I have to. I'm going to write that down so we can go there, yeah. We, uh, that's, we, that's we sat awesome. there. Yeah, there. I like Dave Jenner. Yeah, that's awesome. We uh, we actually sat there next to Alex Bowman and them uh, while we were down there 
during the, I think I was actually at the start of the Xfinity race this year. So that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's good it stuff. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. It's good stuff, man. Well, again, congratulations on your first cup win. And I know there's going to be many more to come. And I think hopefully many more to come just this year. So that's, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I see it. And we wish you nothing but the best luck, especially coming up here in Phoenix. Uh, uh, looking at Phoenix real fast, though, what what um, what do you think about spotting at Phoenix? Uh, Phoenix is kind of a tough place to spot where they have us up in the spotter stand. So we're in the middle uh, F3 and 4, which is now, yeah, now 3 and 4. We're up there um, in the corner, so it's a long way to look. Um, I know it's a short track, kind of just a mile long, but it's a long way to look and a different angle to look off into turn 1 and 2. So it's a difficult place to spot. Um, but going into Phoenix, I'm looking really forward. I know Kyle runs super good there when he was back with Ganassi and stuff like that. I'd watched some races from last year. Um, he, I think he finished fourth there last year. So, um, he definitely, he's, he's super good there. And I know obviously with Chase winning the championship there and Hendrick running really good there, I think we'll, I mean, be honest, have another shot at go for a win and run really well at Phoenix and, put us um put us in a good spot so definitely looking forward to phoenix again just like i would any other race but with phoenix coming up i'm definitely looking forward to it good deal good deal we'll, we wish you nothing but a bit best of luck as i just said man and man i cannot thank you enough for coming and uh hanging out with us and spending some time with us we sure do appreciate it man yeah no problem thanks for having me on i really appreciate it and um Hopefully, maybe we can do this again. Maybe after Phoenix, so I'm out to do another win talk. That's what I hope. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Well, we all for it, man. You, you, yeah. you are welcome to holler at us anytime you want. We'll get you on here anytime, man. And uh, we uh, hope to see y'all in Victory Lane again this weekend. All right, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, ladies appreciate and gentlemen, Mr. Tyler Mon. How cool was that? To have the winning spotter call in to Chicken Bone Island. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Todd, really cool dude. I really do like, like you said. I really appreciate him coming on and hanging out with us, and um, uh, really neat to hear his perspective from his side of it, and 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 what they see, and 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 what they get through. Because you know, like he said, that's a lot of it's a lot on their shoulders, a lot, especially at these, like he said, the the um, super speedways and and <laughs> the restarts at Vegas, <laughs> essentially the same thing, if not worse. Because like he said, I, I mean, some of them ruins. Good lord, they were crazy, but. Uh, just really cool to hear everything about you know a, a day in the life or a week in the life of of a, of a full time spotter. One hundred percent full. I think he's more than full time. I don't even know how you do that, but I'm pretty sure he is. I'm telling you. Oh, uh, that he's man. He spends more time up on top of the building than I spend out of bed in a week. I think. <laughs> Whew, I don't know. That's a lot of work and a lot of preparation and and dedication. I mean, you know. He, he, Especially having you know working with with two or three different drivers and and learning their um, their needs and their wants and how they react and and you know what they react to and that's got to be tough. Um, especially you know like he said, putting his main focus definitely in the five car and and with Hendrick and all. But um, man, it shows already and it's paid off already. Um, I, I I love hearing that they work good together and uh, mesh well. Um, and they're all kind of on the same page, like you said. Um, man, I'm telling you what, I know it's only four races into the season, but that's that's uh, that's the makings of a championship team for sure. I'm telling you, I think he's going to be a big threat that already essentially, not yet, but it essentially solidifies him in the playoffs. And uh, I think he, I think that five car is going to be a threat to to take home the, the championship this year. I really do. Yeah, I, I sure do. And, you know, like we even said earlier in talking with him, um, I mean, they could have had – I don't. I, they could have finished top four every race so far yeah, this year, yeah. really, because, I mean, yeah. they, they should have – I think they really could have won uh, the road course. So, you're talking about top four Daytona, one road course, top four at Homestead, and one – I mean, the, but like you said, you kind of expect it. They got yeah. everything they need. I mean, everything. So, that's awesome. I'm glad he can finally, um, you know, he, he's he's definitely paid his dues and, and come from the bottom, like he said, and he didn't get handed anything, it don't sound like at all. So, uh, you know, working his way up, I'm glad he was able um, 
to to make it to this level and 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 given this this uh chance to prove himself definitely as so. well definitely so i meant to him before he got off here to uh when he sees uh freddie and tj and all them on the on the roof next week go tell them they ain't the only ones can do a podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we try we try <laughs> we try no uh, we like them guys it's adorable for clear which is another spotter podcast you can hear more about spotters there but uh, hey maybe uh we can get tyler back on here after some more wins yeah definitely uh that, that is really cool for sure so uh again thank you very much for coming on and hanging out with us and um man that's uh i like we said, I'm pretty sure they're going to go right on to Phoenix and continue their uh, little streak here. Yeah, Kyle's never been a slouch there. No, no, no sir. Uh-uh. That that's kind of fits his driving style. I mean, not not really up on the fence so much, but just well, it's puts kinda, a little more in the driver's hand. You yeah, lose, you use a lot of right. throttle there. Well, I mean, you know. A lot of throttle control anyway. It's what Phoenix, a lot of throttle control. I think they go to Atlanta, I believe, which. Yeah. I, <laughs> At the end of the run, you better be. <laughs> I mean, he's all over. It. <laughs> That's him. And then Bristol. I mean, come on, now, dirt, dirt, I, Bristol, know. dirt. <laughs> What's That's that? the big thing there, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, I I don't know who else you would pick, but I know who I'm picking for that race. So, uh, well, if we're going back to Las Vegas just to put some bets on something. I know where I'm putting my money in. I yeah, put it that way <laughs> for sure. So uh, anyway, it's really cool. Um, we're gonna be rooting them guys on. Um, looking forward to see what's gonna happen. I don't know if y'all know it, I realize it yet, but we're partial to people that come on our show. <laughs> well, we are. When, we, when you we, come we, on here, we're going to root for you after that. <laughs> I promise you, we're going to. Just because we, I mean, we do before anyway. We've all, I mean, yeah, like I said, like Sterling said, when, when we heard that Kyle was getting back in that car, we was like, oh, yeah, ready ready to see what he can do in there. But, yeah, when, when we get Spotter on here and stuff like that, we're going to root for you extra hard then. Yeah, really cool. <laughs> really cool, really is. And uh great team, great team, too. Like you said, I mean, we got to talk with, with Mr. H, uh, Rick Hendrick, there many years ago, and he treated us just like family. I mean, he talked to us you. like we were just one of his own. And we can um, tell that story real quick. We uh, we actually, uh, Mr. Sterling used to ride motorcycles everywhere, um, and uh, Rick used to put on the Ricky Hendrick charity ride every year. And you rode from Rock Hill, South Carolina, then you rode to the racetrack in well Charlotte Motor Speedway. And, Concord, you rode the entire way on the interstate. Actually, um, and then when you got there, you parked in the parked your motorcycles in the infield, and they treated you to uh, all kinds of food. I know we had barbecue and all kinds of good stuff there in the garage, and uh, they actually before we even got on the ride, uh, started the ride, when you went and signed up, Cobalt had donated. All kinds of tools, and I know I was in your toolbox the other day getting something, and I looked, and there's a that pack of Cobalt Allen wrenches still sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> the ones I got, I got them in my toolbox still. So uh, it's cool that. It, it, but anyway, so what happened was when we got off the motorcycles, uh, started standing in line to get our food because the line was. 40 miles long with people. I mean, yeah. there was literally, how many bikes was that thing? About 1,000 bikes? A bunch. A bunch. 1,200 bikes, I think it was. Um, so we got off got off the motorcycles, went and got in line. We were kind of towards the back, wasn't in no hurry. Well, um, we're standing there in line, and we're getting close to where the table is that's got all the food on it, kind of buffet style, I guess you say. Well, coming up, I looked back in line. Well, we happened to look up, and a helicopter was flying in. And uh, kind of looked towards the back of the line. There come Mr. Hendrick up, and he's literally shaking everybody in line's hand, thanking them for coming. Well, he got right there where we were, and we were right at the very beginning of uh, of the table with the food. <laughs> and so we were like, hey, you, you want to, after he, talk, he spoke to us and talked to us for a while there, and uh, we asked him if he wanted to get in line right there where we were, and get some food and he's like y'all don't mind no <laughs> jump in so he jumped in line and went and sat over there with us and ate so yeah <laughs> that's cool very uh, very shocking but <laughs> he was very very cool for sure so yeah going back to that i think he uh that that um that carries on down through his uh team for sure exactly um, everybody that we have met um related with Hendrick Motorsports has been the same way. They've been really, really nice people. So, um, 
you know, when you surround yourself with people like that, you, you, uh, you know, like it pays off for sure. So uh, it's really cool, really cool. Definitely so, and uh, congratulations to him again. Um, uh, obviously, Kyle won the uh, the cup race. Um, truck race had a little excitement. John Hunter, Nemechek finally got him. Uh, finally got him a win. I thought he's been gonna get this entire year. Um, with his with the KBM team there. Um, really thought he was gonna win at the road course at uh, Daytona. Had some trouble. Had to come back from the back and didn't get it. Uh, he pretty much dominated there at uh, Las Vegas. But there was a little uh. I guess you call it controversy with his uh, truck owner, <laughs> Kyle Busch, who ran yeah. second. He uh, decided, well, he had a flat left rear tire. I mean, that is for sure. He had a flat left rear. He got down on off the bank and coming off four and looped it around. Caution came out. He went in and got a tire, didn't lose a lap, started at the back, drove his way back all the way up to second. Yeah. So the controversy is coming in. Well, did he mean to spin out? Well, <clears throat> this is my, you know, I don't know. It could, I, I don't know. I ain't driving that truck, so I don't know. But this is my opinion. If I'm talented enough to sail that thing down in the corner <laughs> with a going flat left rear, at 170 whatever mile an hour and I don't spin it out and I'm running maybe 60 70 mile an hour on the apron pretty sure I can <laughs> not spin it out that's just my opinion and that's just where I'm going with that he, he's just trying to get there to pit road as quick as he could and just pushed it a little too hard though I think that's what happened nope <laughs> Nope. <laughs> if y'all don't know that reference, go back on uh, Bob Pockris's page and check out Kyle's interview after the race, after the truck race, when he was t when he was asked by Bob Pockris if he spun it out on purpose or if he was going to even talk about it. Nope. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just who knows. I don't know. Um, is it smart to do? Yes. Well, it is. <laughs> Because if he had not have done that, he would not have finished second. No, he'd been multiple laps though. For sure. Now, I, I know Kyle Busch expects to win every time he gets in a truck. And if he don't, he is none too happy. The last time I remember, and I'm sure he may have lost, he may not have lost, but the last time I remember him losing a truck race was at Atlanta when his left rear or right rear fell off. I was there. Come I on, Pitt Road. He was, <laughs> I was right in front of that when that not, happened. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. So, I don't know. I don't know if he did it just to try to get, you know, I mean, yeah, ain't no doubt, Deuce Townsend, ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous to drive from the back to the front twice. It, it's crazy, but I don't know, but if you did it, just do it. Just say you did it and just whatever. No, you can't I mean, just say you did it anymore, though. But this is my thing, is uh, the way they got that SMT data now, which I don't like, actually. Well, I'll get into that here in a minute. Like the black box? Um, Well, it's real-time data on the on every vehicle that's out there. Um, that SMT data is... It, it, you can't really lie about it. They see if you locked up the brakes or how you turned the wheel when you locked up the brakes or, if, you know, if you were trying to save it from it, you could, they can tell. I mean, they they got sensors on your, your steering column. They got sensors on your throttle pedal. They got brake pedal, clutch pedal. They got sensors on everything that the driver touches yep. in, in well, the car. So they, they know. <laughs> well, I went back and looked at it and watched it. And, it, I mean, he made it look very, he sold it very well. Oh, now, yeah. yeah. Whether he did it or not, really did it, I don't know. All I'm speaking of is talent. <laughs> That's all I know. And dude is very talented. I've seen him at a uh, pretty much a 90-degree angle, half on the bank and half off in Daytona, and, and save, save it. it. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I just – maybe he maybe he couldn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm just he gonna looked say down this. for a minute. I don't know. I'm just going to say this, If and you say you went back and watched it. If you look, typically – um, if you're trying to save it, you're on the brakes once it gets sideways. If you look, 
his rear tires never quit smoking because they were spinning the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost like he stood in the gas just saying, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, man. But I guess they'll find out. Um, if so, I don't he'll know, get the- dude. I like Kyle, man. I like his ability, man. But, you know, like last year, well, a couple years ago, he kind of chilled out a little bit with all that stuff and was more down to earth than just a driver. And yeah, he hated to lose. Yeah, he didn't like to whatever. He didn't like to get interviewed after he. Did. But now it's like he's getting back into the old Kyle. Oh yeah. And I think it's because he's been struggling so much here lately. So oh, yeah. it's bugging him really bad. And it's just, I just, I think if he, if he, backs up, and just goes back doing his thing and being a team player. I think you'll notice a big difference. That's just my opinion. Yeah, and that actually takes me back to something what I was just talking about, the SMT data. Um, takes me back to, you know, him saying they're struggling. Um, at Homestead a week ago, um, he came over the radio asking someone to look at the SMT data because he was struggling so bad, but Martin Truex Jr. was up front. Apparently they had very, very similar Essentially setups. Same. As they probably should, being that they've had no well, practice, so they come to track all with the same setup. Um, I don't like that because Kyle Busch has been one of the best drivers in NASCAR, period. I, I, I believe that, and I still will believe that. Whether I like his attitude or whatever, I still think he is one of the best drivers to come through NASCAR. Um, when you have him questioning his driving and wanting to drive like somebody else because that guy's faster. It's like, I don't know, just take something away from it for me. Um, That should be, in my opinion, that data of throttle traces, when when they're getting back into throttle, how much they're getting back into throttle, uh, if they're coming back off of it, stuff like that, that are secret, or and that, in my opinion, should be secrets to how someone is getting around the track faster than somebody else is now pretty much public knowledge. Or it is public knowledge throughout the NASCAR garage. Yeah. And yeah, I don't definitely. I don't like that. I just No, I I, I don't either. Um but you know the thing about it with Kyle that I don't understand. This whole and we said this before. But his whole problem started when you cut out practice yeah. and qualifying. Yeah. Now why that is, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that. But you know, you start, and I know they've already done this, but I mean, me thinking, you you narrow you narrow down your differences. You narrow down what's changed. There's literally nothing else that's changed that I know of. It's been the same car for God knows, I mean, how, how long? So this ain't that ain't changed. That just tells me though that there's more parity coming up in the cars. Well, I mean, they're they're. They're setting these things up to a T for the leader oh, race, yeah. for, for the leader shop. Yeah, I mean they don't change anything at the track anymore. So I mean, I they're don't... really not now. There's no practice, so they're really not. <laughs> no, and I mean, and, and and you know, if okay, if there's certain things that he wants changed in, in practice, just normally simple things is, that they normally would change. If they have to do that during a race, I mean that, I mean especially when there's one caution or two cautions in their in their stage ends. There's no time to work on the car. No, there's no change in the spring. And on top of that, then you put up, like we talked about last week, it takes you 25 laps to set up one pass at some of these racetracks because the aero stuff is so difficult. I mean, you start behind, you're a wait. You 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 cannot overcome that. So I don't know if that's got a lot to do with it. I'm not. I don't know, but uh, I think that's what has got his attitude back. I know. Upset again. I know when he was talking in the interview after the cup race, he was saying he thinks their simula- simulation data is off. Will. Oh, look at Denny Hamlin. Look at Denny Hamlin. Look at Martin Truex. Christopher Bale. Christopher Bale. He's the only one that's... Yeah, now, maybe the simulation does not match his driving style. I could I could see that. And and that that is what I... I I'm on... I don't dig know, a dude. I'm gonna dig a little I, hole here. Uh, that's that's what I have I've not liked about the engineering age of NASCAR now. 
is because that engineer is coming up and saying, all right, this is the best setup you can put in the car. Well, it probably is the best setup if you drive it like X. If you don't I, drive it like X, then it's a horrible setup. I agree with that, but I also say that these drivers are the best in the world. They should be able to adapt to whatever they're sitting in. I agree. And I give agree. it everything it's got. I don't care if it's a fifth place car or a twentieth place car. They gotta give it everything it's got. And I think that's what he should be doing. Now what's going on, I don't know. But you know he's trying. And I think a lot of times Kyle Bush tries too hard. I think when he's got a fifth place car, he tries to turn it into a winning car and it ends up biting him and he finishes twentieth. Yep. Um might be digging another hole, uh, but I almost have to agree with, with what Kyle Petty said uh, last week, uh, or not last week, it had been a couple weeks ago. Um, <laughs> it, you look at, all right, Kyle had pretty much the worst year out of the uh, Gibbs bunch last year. Maybe Eric Jones. Um but for the most part, he had a pretty bad year on Kyle Busch standards. All right, we got Christopher Bell over there now with big contract, big money behind him. He's already won a race. Um, then he's up there. He's not going anywhere right now because he's got big money behind him and a multi-year contract. I don't know what Kyle's contract is right now. Um, I imagine still probably got year or two on it. Um, just, just, just my thinking is... Kind of agreeing with Kyle Petty, what he had to say. And Gibbs drivers better be looking out. And Kyle may be the one that's taking that too much to heart right now. Um, he's not had the performance that we're used to seeing out of a Kyle Kyle Bush. And I know he's had good backing, but um, there's another driver with the last name Gibbs coming up. <laughs> And he needs well, he's got, he's got to go somewhere. Well, <clears throat> regardless of what they say, <laughs> I, my opinion right here, I'm going to say a Gibbs, a person with the last name Gibbs ain't going to no other farm team. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not going anywhere else. So they're going to be in one of those cars. Um, but I'm not I'm not throwing in the towel on on Kyle. No, 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 I'm not either. I'm just saying that they all think... got to be looking looking oh, looking yeah. in the mirror. <laughs> I mean, Kyle is. I, like I said, this ain't just this ain't been something that's faded over a long period of time. This was like a light switch. Yeah. Period. When they quit practice. When they quit practice and they quit qualifying, it is like a light switch. Yeah. Boom. Completely. So that's what they gotta I think. That's what they gotta determine where that is where 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 is that hurting them at right there. And there's no overcoming it because of the way these the way the races are falling now. When there was fifteen, twenty cautions during a race Plenty of time to work on something. You could take something with three tires and start the race, and you got time to work on it. They get it where you need it. Now, with, I mean, literally, there's two or three cautions throughout a whole race, and that's with stage ends. You get lucky if somebody has a flat tire, then you get another caution that's in there. That's all you I mean, got, and you you cannot, when they're running 12-something second pit stops on, on, on the green flag conditions, you can't work on no car. No. You, there's nothing you can do. You might can get a, a track bar adjustment or I mean, something you got like that. To be they they got to be on though. it to do that. Because if, if you lose two or three seconds on pit road, that makes a lord of a well, big, two, huge difference. Two or three seconds on pit road. I mean, you. I know I heard one time they said pretty much, you know, under green flag conditions, you for the most part, even when they spread out, a second of position. Right. So you lose three seconds on pit road. That's most time three positions, and we just talked about it take him a whole fuel run sometimes to set up a pass on one guy, even though you're faster than him. It take that whole fuel run to pass him. Mm -hmm. So yep. when you do that, you ain't doing nothing falling farther and farther behind. So right. Kyle's gonna have to, uh, Kyle Bush gonna have to, and the Gibbs team over there gonna have to figure out something. Well, they do, and and you know that that kind of was a. We kind of went off on a tangent there <laughs> of his attitude. That's why we're here. <laughs> but it all kind of comes back to his attitude, and that's where I'm going to end with this. Like I said, I think if he goes back, gets gets a better positive attitude, gets his team morale up, and get people around him that, that want to 
motivate and get better, I think that's when you'll see a difference. Yeah, I do too. And uh, and just to add on that, I almost kind of, uh, and I don't want to go too much farther, but I almost kind of wonder, it sounded like he was a little bitter starting the first of the year with the way him and Adam Stevens split up. Well, and, I, yeah. And and I don't know if that's kind of carrying over or what, um, but it just seems like there's, you know, they got to get that team back together. They definitely do, and 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 if he is talking to his new crew, crew chief like he's talked to Adam Stevens, Adam Stevens. I mean, we listen to him on Spotter all the time oh, on, yes. on, on radio, and Adam don't take no. He didn't take no junk off of Kyle, at all. And you know, Kyle's smart, yes, but Kyle's job is to drive a race car and yeah. tell him what it's doing. It's Adam's job to determine and decide what to do to that car to make it faster and better. And if you cannot trust and back your spotter, I mean, pfft, well, your spotter too, but if you cannot back. <laughs> We're stuck on spotters today. We are. <laughs> but uh, if you cannot back your crew chief, and if your crew chief cannot back your driver, you, um, I, I don't th- I, I don't think the whole, the, it hurts the whole team. It's not just, it's just not just one person. It's not just on track time. It's everything. And, um, I don't know if his new crew chief, I don't know if uh, he's going to handle getting talked to like that. And I know I wouldn't handle it well. No. no, no I'm not going to be talked to like I'm a child. And I'd that's kind of how he does. And I'd be the first crew chief to quit in the middle of a race. I mean, you know, I listen to. I tell him we're up here eating ice cream. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I listen to Tyler Mon on the uh, this past week. And. Cliff Daniels and all them, just listening to them. Dude, they were so, well, they were on point. They were they were very much businesslike. But there was no, it, it was all with respect. Oh, yeah. They talked 100% with respect. Like, they're all on the same level. They're not, this guy's down here and this, and, and you know, this is, this is a piece of crap. You know, I can't try. The, to me, if I work hard to try to get something for you to have. Yeah. And you retaliate as to tell me this is crap. My motivation to want to make it better for you is not very good. <laughs> no. I'd be like, you just, okay, we're going to wipe you behind with that crap because I'm done with you. <laughs> exactly. That's that's kind of the way I look at it. And that's the way, you know, that's, that's the, even working, having a working relationship with anybody, not necessarily in racing, but in in, in general, period. You can't treat someone that's below you, below you. You can't treat them like they're below you. You yeah. gotta treat them like you're on the same page. And I promise you, you'll you'll get a better uh, you'll get a better reaction, and, and 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 everything will go better. I mean, it just will. Period. So anyway, enough about Kyle's. <laughs> um, I'll be his motivational speaker. I'll, t- I'll try to help him out. I give him I'll give him a Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> Any sponsor by him? <laughs> Maybe he needs another one. <laughs> oh yeah, I think he doesn't need another. One. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, so, so Xfinity race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, AJ Allmendinger finally gave him another oval win. Yes, he did. He's gonna be tough this year, man. I, I believe that. I, I thought that. You know, I thought that even I, last year, and he was. I mean, he didn't have full time ride last year, but he finally gave him an yeah. oval win last year. Uh, and I said then, I was like, I think he, if he get in the right setting, he could be good. Um. In the Xfinity series, I'm not saying he couldn't be a good Cup driver, because, but he just I don't know something never clicked with him. It didn't seem like um, in the Cup series. Um, maybe as always the teams he was with, I don't know, but he's kind of got about the best of the best equipment you're gonna get in the Xfinity series right now, and he's up yeah. front with it. So yeah, definitely, and and I think that's got a lot to do with it. You know, you're getting the right breaks. Um, we talked about it before, Alex Bowman. You know, he. He, he he didn't have the best of breaks for a long time, right. and you know finally over time got his break. He got to where he can show off his talent. Um, AJ's got a, a, a lot of talent. He does. Yeah. Um, he needs to uh, he needs to to sometimes take a chill pill. I think every I now and then. I believe that too. And and let the race come to him some, but he's very talented, and he like you said he is in very good equipment. So I look for him to uh, very much so contend. This year, him and Austin Cindric, I think, is going to be button heads and button fenders, and <laughs> obviously, <laughs> all year long. I think so. Uh, uh, but congrats to them. Um, another thing, speaking of spotters, I heard oh, uh, 
Ty Dillon has some trouble with his spotter and his his Ooh, radio. The Xfinity race there. Yeah, that's been a hot topic this week already, too. His, uh, I don't know. He, the spotter said that his radio don't have any low battery indicator at all. No light, no beeps, no whatever, which is kind of odd to me because every radio I've ever been on or I, I've, I've spotted myself at, at some short tracks and some late model stuff, and I've had the issue of low batteries. And it, But every, like I said, every one that I've ever been on, uh, it all of a sudden starts beeping in your ear, and you know that it's about to go dead. Well, right. Ty Dillon, they were coming to green, and Spotter's battery died. So Spotter reaches down to grab a battery and... uh take uh change battery and i don't i can't remember was it right after the restart or a lap in well whatever it was i i can't even remember right now but anyway they went four wide and ty dillon wrecked it was more or less it, nobody really hit him it was more or less air than anything but the spotter was not there to tell him that somebody was that he was four wide he had no clue he was four wide yeah so that's um at that level of racing in my opinion, I mean that's something really important. Obviously, to have your spotter there with with good radios, good batteries, yeah. and why would you not have a radio with any kind of low battery indicator on it? Yeah, I don't know. I I I really I really wish we'd have remembered to ask um, Tyler about this, but you know I wonder if they you know do they change batteries multiple times throughout the race just to be safe that they don't lose them or. You know, they do they wait for that indicator to, to to change them? I don't know. You know, if it was me, I would probably change them every every caution just to. I, I mean, mean, why not have five batteries up there when you finish your right. when you finish hurt? your uh, finish your pit stop? Change it out. I know a lot of those guys wear two two radios on their belts. Um, right, and they'll have them on the same channel. That way, if something does happen, flip flip, another one's back on. Yeah. Um, wow. Well. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand that. Uh, I I feel like the Xfinity series because I know uh, racing electronics makes some good radios, and I've been on plenty of racing electronic radios, and every one I've ever been on starts beeping at you when the when the battery right. gets low. So yeah. Well, who knows? They get it worked out maybe, but uh, um, I hate it for Ty Dillon because I mean he's had like at Daytona he had a fast car. <laughs> yeah, he got. He caught got up. caught up in something there. Uh, I don't think he was had a winning car at Las Vegas, but he was there. Um, boy can't catch a break. <laughs> no, he can't. Sure, sure can't. So, uh, hopefully, he'll get turned around. Maybe uh, this weekend at Phoenix for him. Maybe they can catch a break. Finally, uh, is he running out there? I, I don't know. know. I, I, don't I know. thought he was. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't know where he's running anymore. I can't keep up with it. Both he ain't running many races this year, which is still weird to me. Yeah, it really is. Um, I don't know. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe not. I don't know. It's just, it just seemed like he wanted to. The uh, uh, way he came across on social media, anyway, kind of seemed like he wanted to. Wanted to run. Um, but it just, I don't know. It's so weird that, you know, Austin's had a ride at Childress for all these years, and Ty's never, after he ran the truck in Xfinity Series, Four children. Now, Jermaine was close a close uh, relationship with Childress, but I don't know. It's just kind of weird that they won't have him in house over there because I feel like I feel like he could have got some sponsorship being in house at Childress. That's a little better name to come to a sponsor with um, than saying you're with I don't know Joe Blow back runner back there. Even though Childers hadn't been a front runner lately, but no, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, you know, he wants to make a name for himself. He don't want to be known for, you know, granddaddy's money, this, that, and the I get other." It, and but I, I mean, I, he can make a name for himself by his ability on a racetrack. I mean, you know, if he can go, if he can go put a, a, a RCR car up front right now, that's making your name for yourself because. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna happen a whole lot. Just, I mean, I think um, Tyler Reddick is one of the best talents right now, and he's giving it all he's got, and he's like a roller coaster. 
Yeah. I mean, so, he is. I mean, it's, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's no. I mean, it's it's no secret that RCRs had a uh, had its ups and downs. Well, mostly downs for the pa- quite the past few years. Um, so I'm, I'm the same way. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, but maybe Ty can figure something out, and when he gets, cause that's just odd seeing him in a Toyota, though. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> very. I don't know. This is yeah, odd. So. It is, but. Anyway, um, good weekend there at Phoenix. I mean, at Vegas, looking forward to Phoenix. Um, I always use this week or this weekend to kind of figure out and guess who's going to be winning the the the, uh, the championship. And yep. uh, kind of like we said earlier with Tyler, I really believe that uh, um, our buddy old Kyle Larson is going to have just as good a shot as any of them. I really believe it. Well, if five races ago is any indication <laughs> right <laughs> i think i know who might uh who might be up front there at phoenix yes 100 percent. because the weather should be similar yeah you, you're gonna see hendrick uh all up in there for sure and uh and i tell you what man i think um <laughs> i think chase elliott's got the uh got the 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 championship curse He's he's been catching the devil left and right this this well, year so far. I'll go back to Las Vegas real quick with him. I don't understand it. Um, he was up front, up front, and um, they had a something happened on the pit stop. I don't know if uh, I don't. I, I, it, I, sometimes I know a shot won't come all the way back out, especially on the right side. And apparently the car was really low when they let it down, and the jack got hung up under the car, or either it fell off the stop. And was just right. behind it, and he had to pull it around it. Right. And so it pulled out the bottom little uh, flare piece down there. I guess side skirt. Side skirt. Um, kind of flared it out. And I don't. I'm wondering if NASCAR is the ones that made them come back in and fix it. Because remember, a few years ago, the oh, yeah, side they were, skirts they were making. It, they, uh, they were denting them with their knees and yeah, doing this right here with the side just to get more air. Or get air off the right rear, yeah. Exactly. And so I'm wondering if, if NASCAR, because they didn't say anything about NASCAR making them come in. They said they wanted to come in and fix it. And they went from literally the lead, or se- finished second in that stage. Yeah. W- went lead sta- lead to second numerous times. And they come in and elected to go all the way to the back. But they got up under the car, putting tape up under the car and all this stuff. And to me, never seemed as fast. Well, he After, drove it back he up. He drove it back up, but he just and didn't he spun seem... it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened there, but I know he spun it out on the back straightaway or something. Something happened. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody might have got it to him or whatever. It just but... didn't seem like worth that, fixing to me. <laughs> After that, after that spin, he no, he was nothing uh, like he was. Um uh, he's definitely good at Phoenix, so we will see what happens over there. I think Bowman's awesome at Phoenix. Yeah. Um, Larson awesome at Phoenix. Uh, Williams <laughs> awesome at Phoenix. So I look for some. Uh, I look for a lot of Hendrick cars to be up front. That's for sure. We'll actually be able to see if Harvick has anything this year because Harvick is uh, not doing anything right now. No, he he felt like a rock the other day, dude. Dude, I'm telling you, he, and they and it, he it ran was back. it was Stuart. It was Stuart Haas as a whole, pretty much. Eh? Yeah, they all of them look good. Yeah, they if 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 he struggles like that at Atlanta, something's wrong with their cars. Phoenix <laughs> and Atlanta. I mean, he's always good at Phoenix. I mean, it, I ain't gonna say he wins. He he won there for a good while at Phoenix. Um, oh yeah, but he's typically a good top ten candidate. That top five a lot of times. Right. Um. So we'll see if he can do anything. Um. And then Atlanta will be another one. But I think Atlanta's kind of come around. Um. I think some people learned what he was doing there. Once at SMT data, like I was talking about a little while ago, I think they learned what, what he was yeah. doing. Well, I, I can tell you what he did. I can watch it and tell you. Put your left sides below the white line. On and it and right below it and <laughs> at all costs. Put it down there and keep it there. If you keep it there, you're going to run the Harvick line. That's it. So everybody knows that. So if you didn't know it, now you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, good deal. Well, like I said, on to Phoenix, and we'll see what happens there. Um, what else we got? We had a little bit of a little bit of dirt action this past weekend. Had um, the World of Outlaws at Smoky Mountain Speedway there in Tennessee on Saturday. And fitting enough for the name, Chris Smoky Madden 
lit it flag to flag and kind of checked, kind of yeah. checked out on them up there. Yeah, um, sure did. Congrats to them and uh, our buddy Strickler. He like he struggled a little bit. Yeah, he, he's he wasn't doing too great up there. Um, couldn't I don't know, couldn't find something. He he was the rookie of the race. If he he was highest finishing rookie. Yeah. Um. So I mean that's something, but he's. He missed something there, and that happens. I, them boys go to so many different tracks. I mean, we look at it, and you're like, "Oh, they had a bad night. They had a bad night. They got sixty some races this year, or sixty right, right, sixty races this year." Oh yeah, it's piling. You go to so many different tracks. Eventually, you're gonna not hit it a few nights. And he's yeah. been on it more than not at the World Outlaw races. So, <laughs> you know, we just. It's kind of, you know, we get so used to seeing him up front, and, you know, he's a buddy of ours, so we just want to, we want to see him up front. Yeah, absolutely. And glad to see our buddy, uh, also, Chris Ferguson, get get back, uh, get his car put back together and get out there and get back, get, get with him a little bit. Yeah, he got it back going at, up there at Smoky Mountain, and uh, I don't remember where he finished, but he qualified pretty good. I think he had a decent run up there. Um, so that was good to see. But the next night, at come down here to Cherokee for March Madness. Um, he went to pull it off the trailer, and I guess they noticed it wasn't running right. And looked, and they had a broke uh, lifter and a broke rocker. So he didn't get ruined. Well, Fergie time yeah, didn't get ruined. It that's tough, right? They Cherokee. spent a lot of time getting that car ready, and you know, I hate that. But he'll get it right, and I'll uh, be ready for the next one. Yep. Um, and I text. Sterling, I was watching the cup race and the dirt race all at the same time. One on my phone, one on the TV. <laughs> Had to watch it all, though. Um, and qualifying come up, and I text Sterling, and I said, uh, Overton's going to kill him this afternoon. You can always tell. <laughs> you can always tell, but I mean, I, literally, I think you can almost tell when they unload whether or not they're going to dominate. Yeah. And when they, when I say dominate, they dominate. Well, and me and you had this conversation. I had it even at the racetrack the other night. We were talking about some racing um, with some of Willie Milken's crew over there. We were just talking about, you know, the big racing going on. And <laughs> like we said, Brandon Overton and that Will's performance crew over there, They when they hit it, it's done for. Oh, yeah. They don't just hit it enough to be competitive. They hit it and they are checked out. Um, yeah, gone. And so, and that's what they did again. They had a caution there, a few laps to go, and kind of bunched them back up. But uh, he, um, I know who was it? Jimmy Owens finished second, and Davenport finished third. And um, but other than that, he checked out. Led flag to flag, that one too. So, uh, not that they were bad races by no means, but they, uh, Chris Madden and Brandon Overton tried to put on some snooze fest just by checking out on everybody this weekend. Yeah. They was dominating, for sure. Definitely so. Definitely so. Um, I don't even know what's <clears> up next for them. I, ain't, I can't even remember. No, I haven't looked in. Well, I know next week coming up, um, we'll be starting at Bristol. Yep, they definitely will be. Um, Had practice there last night. Well, Monday night. This show is late, everybody. As y'all already know, it is. Uh, it will be coming out on Wednesday morning. It is Tuesday evening right now as we're talking. I uh, had to push it back a little bit there for get Tyler on here, and so we did that. Um, so as we were looking last night, they had practice for the World Outlaws at Bristol, and Ricky Weiss put it on them up there and practice. Yeah, fifteen sure two six six. Yeah, Lap strolling. There. So I was, I was moving. Uh, it's, 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 it's gonna be interesting. It's kind of a weird. It's kind of weird. Yeah, seeing them on there, how they how, how they have to drive the cars, and it's like they're constantly turning left. I mean, it's not really you know. But I haven't seen but one car on track at a time. I want to see them side by side in here and see what. There know, was a few on it at one point last night. I watched. Um, they stretched practice on that a little bit, and there was a few on it. But track. The groove never got really wide, though. Right, that's the what racing I'm line that, never yeah. got really wide enough. You know, it wasn't like a whole day of racing out on it. So, uh, but it did get a little dusty. So, I'm hoping they get that under control before all the races start there because yeah. 
Uh, it's going to be rough if not. Yeah, I mean, you oh. start to get 2,000 cars out there in a day. Good <laughs> Lord. That's a lot of laps put down on it. And it's either going to pack it real tight and all the dust go and all the dust and moisture and everything else go away, or either it's just going to stay dusty. So they'll figure it out. Yeah. They'll figure it out to have a. Uh, as many mines they got going on it, they'll have, they'll figure it out. Um, yeah. Speaking of, it came out, the Bristol Dirt stuff came out on iRacing today. I jumped on it there for a little while. I'm not a fan of it yet on iRacing, but I know they'll figure it out also. They kind of, that's probably one of the fastest. I know the track was already there, but all the updating they had to do because they had to take off the safer barrier on it um, and put dirt on it, but they had to put dirt on it with no real data from anybody on it so i know that had to be kind of tough but they they did i mean the track's fine it's just the cars drive a little weird on it to me right now but they'll adjust some things yeah they'll have an update soon have a little bit better setup for as far as a fix yeah they'll uh they'll um they'll do a midweek update and stuff like that and it'll be good it'll be good it's i I did get on there I, i was trying a few different cars on there just to see what i like the cup cars did not like the late model dirt late models i didn't like um the big block modifieds though i really like them around there they were a lot of fun cool so there'll be some good racing going on there i feel like a uh, street stocks and stuff like that on there would probably be really fun yeah, to race so. be, be yeah. good Keep wide track right? yeah be able to actually race on there so that's pretty cool anyway what else we got this week Man, I don't know, man. I think that's enough fun for one episode. That was an awesome show for sure. Uh, definitely want to thank old Jacqueline and, and uh, Tyler for coming on with us and hanging out. Um, man, I tell you what, we got to we, 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 we keep on topping and topping and topping. We just got to keep moving up. Moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like Sterling just said, thank, thank you, Jacqueline, and thank you, Tyler, for coming on here and hanging out with us. Um, we like to do it and have fun and have fun talking to you guys and y'all made a lot of fun this week and, uh, can't wait to do some more of it. Um, so want to, uh, as always, as we do every week, thank SRI Performance, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, Draco Springs. I want to thank our buddy Randy Keen. I talked to him the other day. He's got a lot of stuff going on right now with SRI. He's not... I'm going to tell you, I didn't even know this. Uh, he, he's the man on brakes over there. Don't get me wrong. He is the man on brakes at SRI now. Um, but he's selling a little bit of everything now for SRI. He so, don't care. Bro. He but don't Randy's care. been, I'm going to tell you all, if y'all need anything for a, especially, especially a dirt late model or a big block modified, or really either just a UMP modified, any of them, any of them, Randy is the man that has been around that sport for a long time and knows anything and everything about it. So if you want, need need to know something, especially about brakes on your car, let let us know. I can get you in touch with Randy and um, get you hooked up with him, and he can set you up with everything you need from SRI. Um, and his, you know, he runs his company off of that, which is RK Motorsports Consulting, and uh, he can get you set up with everything on there that you will possibly need. Also, think as always, Earl Ramey, with Earl Ramey Racing Engines. Um, like we said before, go get your uh, crate motors from Earl and uh, tell them we sent you and line up some dyno time. Um, as always, Ford Bite Apparel. Springtime's coming. They got new stuff coming out. Go get you some Ford Bites. So, Coltrane, uh, this past weekend... Uh, they started the tour that they're doing, um, had some bad look. He, uh, practice, 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 uh, I think it was, I'm trying to remember days, because they was out there from, like, Thursday on. Anyway, they practiced, I think it was Thursday, I don't know, they practiced Friday night, I want to say it was. If I, I got days wrong, I'm sorry, but it, it, regardless, they practiced, had a good bit of practice, had good practice, um, got some laps, everything was good, um, Changed the gear, they said. Went out to run, I think, a heat race. And broke the chain. And when it broke the chain, it bent the gear shaft on the motor. Which actually isn't on those the way those motors are set up. It actually goes back through a transmission. 
So it's not a crankshaft on the motor, so that's good. You know, I'm so used to little things like that being like a go-kart motor, but it's not. It's more like a motorcycle motor, which it is. Uh, broke the gear shaft, so they got to pull it out. So they're, But they're going to try to be back on track this weekend. Um, in that 600 micro sprint there. Um, also, I want to thank Checkered, the race hub. Get on Checkered. Get your premium membership. That is social media. That is pure racing. Any kind of racing, too. Lawnmowers, RC cars, sim racing, dirt track, asphalt, anything. Anything you can think of, there's a group for it on there. So go check out Checkered and uh, put on there that you want a micro-sponsor, Chicken Bone. Help us out a little bit. Also, RMAC Solutions, any of your fab needs. If your fab machine-wise needs, um, you know, everybody needs fab work, but sometimes the machines to do that fab work need a little bit of work also. So uh, be sure to get in touch with RMAC Solutions. Get all your products that you need for your fab company there. I think that's all. <laughs> a lot of people to thank. We sure do appreciate y'all uh, <laughs> definitely coming on with us and helping us out and, um, you know, helping making this happen for sure. But, uh, again, we appreciate everybody for, for uh, tuning in and um, like us, follow whatever, us. share us, follow share us. us. Go on YouTube and like our page or subscribe to our page there, whatever. Yes, yes please do. Um, Dave is doing a lot of stuff with the uh, GoPro camera, trying to get it in, uh, in in cars wherever he can and doing a lot of editing uh, to get some some good footage in his race cars. So um, that's going on our YouTube channels. Um, so, you know, whoever, whenever, go on there and subscribe to it. Don't just watch it. Subscribe to it because those subscriptions help us out. Uh, we need they'll help, need, need they'll help y'all out, too, because we have to get to a certain number to actually be able to do YouTube live videos. Yeah. Um. So to be able to see us live when yeah. we're able to, um, we need to get those numbers up. So y'all uh, share us, help us out any way you can. Get us out there with anybody. And it's easy to find. Go on YouTube, look up Chicken Bone Alley. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. So anyway, guys, thank you all so much for hanging out with us again this week. Sorry we're a day late, but I think it was worth it. And uh, Most definitely. Yeah. But next week, we'll, who knows what we got in store. We can't plan these things. You never know. It's a surprise. I'm hoping maybe Derek could go win the Rattler. And we'll just, oh, yeah. They just come hang out with us again. Come hang out with us again. Sounds It'll be like something good to talk about. So anyway, guys, we will definitely uh, talk with you all next week. Later. Later.